Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about setting up your development environment on the El Capitan operating system. So it's 2016 and Apple has released a new operating system as you all know. It's been a while. However, I have never done a video showing everybody how to set up the development environment on this new OS just yet. So this is the first video uh, for all the updates that are about to come. I'm going to be doing one for Windows 10 and Ubuntu as well. So if you want to see those operating systems, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to like this video as well to show your support. And uh, without any further ado, let's get started. So let's take a look at what I've got over here. Uh, I have the plain Jane version of El Capitan installed running in my VMware Fusion. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to set up Homebrew first. Now let's talk about Homebrew. Homebrew is what we call a package manager. And what it allows us to do is install packages that we need very, very easily. And what, what do I mean by packages? Well, um, when we're doing development with Rails or Ruby or whatever programming language out there, we have to install tools that allow us to do things like, for example, installing Elasticsearch or Redis or, um, you know, the programming language of the languages themselves. We need to have some kind of tool that does all this stuff for us. And Homebrew is that tool. So before we get started, there's something about El Capitan and Homebrew that, um, doesn't jive correctly. And we're going to be looking at fixing that problem first. So homebrew depends on this folder here called the user local folder. And so um, if we don't have that folder, uh, we need to generate it first. And it just so happens that El Capitan has this feature called system integrity protection. And that feature uh, prevents homebrew install script from setting up that folder. So we have to do it manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this command over here and we're going to open up. So I just copied that. I'm going to open up terminal. As you can see, this is, you know, completely blank installation. I'm going to paste this into our command line and I'm going to type in my password. Um, and it says that user local file exists. So what this means is I can proceed to install homebrew. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to copy this command over here to install homebrew. Head over here, hit install. All right. So it's going to ask me to uh, install Xcode. Um, go ahead and click install and click agree. All right. So once that's done, go ahead and click done and we can now press any key to continue the installation for Homebrew. So now Homebrew is being downloaded and installed. All right, great. So installation was successful as you can see here on the screen. So what we're going to do next is we are going to install RBENV. So now that we have Homebrew, we can do brew install. Let, let me enlarge the text just a tad. So I'm just gonna do brew install RBENV. So now Homebrew is going to take care of installing all the dependencies so it keeps things very simple. So once this is done, what we're going to do next is we need to do a few things to set up RBNV on our system. So uh, I'm going to copy this command over here, export RBNV root. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to put this in our profile as it's instructed over here. To do that, we're going to do vi bash profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste the rbnv root into here. Hit wq. So colon wq in vi will save and quit. And then what we're going to do is run this bash profile. So now rbnv should be accessible. So as you can see here, we can actually now use RBNV to set up Ruby. That's what RBNV does is it allows us to install Ruby very, very easily. So let's go ahead and do that. RBNV install. So we can see a list of all the Ruby versions that is available by using the hyphen L command, this one here. So we're just going to do RBNV install 2.3.0, hit enter. 
and RB Envy is going to then download Ruby, the source code, and compile it and, and basically set it all up for us uh, on this computer over here. And once we're done with that, the Ruby installation is complete. And the next step is we're going to install Rails. All right, so once we have uh, Ruby installed on our system, the next thing we need to do is set the path correctly. What do I mean by set the path? Well, by default, the operating system has its own path that it looks at for things like Ruby installations or any other kind of installations that is in the system. We want to force the system to use the one that we just installed, which is you know, being managed by RBNV. So to do that, we're going to go back into the bash profile. So VI bash profile. Uh, and what we want to do is uh, type this out over here. So if you have never used VI before, to go into insert mode, you want to hit the I and you will see at the bottom of the screen, it says insert. Once it says insert, you can paste things in, you can type things in, okay? So let's go ahead and type this out. Export path equals. So what we want to do is the shims path for RBNV. We want that to come first. So USR local var RBNV slash shims. Then we want to use the USR local bin. Then we want to put the default path. So the path that was set by the operating system. So what we're doing here essentially is we're setting the priority so that the ones that is coming being managed by RBNV comes first and then uh, our local bin uh, folder that we're going to use to install other binaries later on down the line to come second and then we set the default operating system path. So basically we're overriding the system path using this export line over here. So once that's done, I'm going to hit escape and then hit colon. WQ to save and quit and I'm going to source. So I'm, when I do that, the dot with the tilde bash profile, I'm going to force the file to run. So it's going to take into effect what we just put in that file. So now what we can do is RBNV global 2.3.0. So now if we type Ruby hyphen V, it should say Ruby 2.3.0. So now uh, the Ruby command is using the Ruby installation that we just installed using RBNV. Once we have this set up, the next thing we need to do is install the bundler gem. So gem install bundler. So if you have everything set up all right, you should not get any complaints about any permissions. However, if you use your system Ruby, you may get complaints about permissions that it's not allowing you to install certain gems. All right, so the bundler gem has now been installed successfully. The next thing we need to do is install Rails. So gem install Rails. All right, so finally Rails has been installed. Before uh, I leave you guys, one thing I wanna mention is we also need to install a database. And what I recommend is we use this Postgres app over here. So you can head over to postgresapp.com, click download and install, and uh, that will basically take care of your database for you. So once you download that, it's very straightforward. You just unzip the file and then simply just drag and drop into the application folder. And then go ahead and start the database. Open. All right, so once you have your Postgres database set up, this should be uh, enough to get you started working with Rails. So let's go ahead over here before we end this video and generate a Rails app. So I'm in my home folder here. I'm gonna create a new folder. Generally what I do is create a new directory uh, called repositories. And I'm going to CD into there and do Rails new D uh, just blogger. So I'm gonna try and generate a new Rails app using uh, Postgres database and uh, yeah, so if this command runs successfully, we have complete, uh, completed you know, setting up the development environment for Rails with a Postgres database. This is going to be the foundation uh, for doing any kind of development or app development with Rails. All right, so as you can see here, there's been a problem with the, you know, the Postgres gem. And uh, what we need to do is, um, let's go over here and click on documentation on the Postgres app documentation. So this is very similar to what we were doing before. 
all we need to do is put this in our uh, bash profile. So what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this whole thing over here and then I'm going to put this in front over here before anything that looks good. Save and quit run the bash profile. And then I'm going to try and run the new uh, generate a new rails app once again, hit enter. Override. So um, it's detected the old one we were generating, but the only part that it failed was the bundle install. And with this new setup that we added to the path, uh, everything should install correctly. All right, so everything seems to have installed correctly. And uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And we also have a Facebook page and you can send us messages over there if you need help or you can leave them in the comments section below and we will help you out uh, promptly. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.